Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we have another rankings video. I'm going to be ranking all of my ColourPop palettes. This is one that I've been putting off because I feel like I have so many, but if you wanna see what's the worst and then of course what comes out on top, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And today's video is really exciting because it's actually in collaboration with my friend Leah Jene. And she loves ColourPop, so I thought, you know, this is kind of a perfect mix here for a collab. What I love her channel most for is her TJ Maxx videos. Now, I seem to have the worst TJ Maxx but she seems to have the best TJ Maxx's ever. So if you're ever interested in TJ Maxx content, she goes in multiple times a week and shares with you what makeup is in stock at TJ Maxx. I don't know why hers is so good, but I am so jealous. She also covers a lot of other content as well. Like I said, she does other ColourPop content. She does makeup reviews. She does hauls. She makes me want to go to Bath & Body Works all the time. She films a lot of Bath & Body Works hauls. So if you want to be convinced to spend money or anything that's new in the market, I definitely would recommend checking out her channel. Without further ado, let's get into the rankings. So I own a total of 24 ColourPop palettes. There was a couple that I did leave out because they've been long gone for the past few years and nobody's really interested in them because as you know, ColourPop just comes out with a lot of palettes. So it's kind of like, I had to condense it somehow. So you probably won't even notice because they were palettes that nobody cares about. And as far as the quality of ColourPop, let me just say that I love my ColourPop palettes. I think they are well worth the money. Not all the palettes are as great as others. Sometimes there can be a little bit of inconsistencies in the formulas, but I will say for the most part, I haven't gotten a ColourPop palette that I didn't feel like was worth the money. There's some palettes that I feel like are a little bit more worth it and there's some where I'm like, okay, it was worth $10, but I did spend ten dollars on it so yeah that's kind of where we're at there really isn't a palette that I have tried so far that I dislike from ColourPop I'm a big fan of their products a big fan of their packaging and all of these I did purchase with my own money so let's get into it number 24 and you guys are gonna be like girl what the heck but it is the pretty guardian sailor moon palette now if I were ranking this based on packaging this would rank uh, probably in the top five Honestly, probably number one looking at it, but I am a huge Sailor Moon fan. Of course, growing up, I loved Sailor Moon, but the colors in here aren't my kind of colors. They're very, very pastel, just very light. I enjoy the quality in here. I don't think it's ColourPop's greatest, but it's just not a color story that I've been so tempted to grab for. So I've only used this like once or twice, but I definitely like to pull it out and look at it. So while I do love the packaging, I do not love the color combos that we have going on in there. But again, that is just personal preference. Number 23, we have the very first palette to ever Walk the Earth from ColourPop, and that is the Yes Please palette. I remember back in the day it was, okay. <laughs> I remember back in the day it was heavily compared to the Natasha Denona, is it the Sunrise or the Sunset palette? The very first warm palette that really got a lot of buzz from Natasha Denona, and this is a great palette. At this point, this palette is probably expired, but I still keep it. I used it all throughout college and I loved it. But now as the years have gone on, I'm just not into this kind of color story anymore. It's a little bit more boring to me. I don't like yellow and oranges. I mean, I do, but as you can see, I just have other color stories that I admire more and want to use more. So it's just a mixture of I'm bored of the color story and I'm bored of it because it's also one of the oldest ColourPop palettes that I own. But it was very good back in the day, but I do think it's a little bit outdated at this point. Number 22. Again, this is another one where the packaging, I still keep it in its box. It's incredible. This is one of their newer palettes that I've purchased. This is from their Hello Kitty and Friends collection, the Snow Much Fun palettes. And I have to admit, I did love the couple of looks that I came up with, but I don't love the quality on this. I feel like the shimmers are a little bit lackluster and it just, compared to other qualities that I've tried from ColourPop, this does not come up on top. So quality is the reason why this is ranking so low, but even though the quality is not the best, it was worth the money that I paid. 
so it's still decent. Number 21, again, this is a newer palette. Huh, interesting that the newer palettes have come at the bottom. But this is the Fade Into Hue palette. And again, this is another one where I like it and I can make it work. And it was definitely worth the money. You get so many colors in here, but you do have to adjust it and adjust the way that you apply makeup in order to make this work. Because especially this bottom row, I find the colors to be very, very, very powdery. So you make a huge mess on your face so don't do your face makeup first but I love 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 the color story on this since I'm equipped with how this formula needs to be handled I use it a certain way and I can make it work and I just love the options that I have here but again if we are ranking you know I'm looking at color story and quality this does rank pretty low but I do still enjoy it number 20 we have the you're a cutie palette now this isn't sold anymore but I did buy it last year and again this is one of the palettes where where I felt like the shimmers were a little bit lackluster, but what I love about this palette is the color story, and just, it's so, it's cute, you're a cutie, and I love the colors in this palette, so even though, again, like, I feel like it needs a glitter glue or a wet brush to apply those shimmers, I feel like the look that I get every time is just so beautiful, so it's still a great palette for what I paid for. Number 19, this is where I start to really enjoy all of the palettes that I'm talking about from this point on. This is a really great purple palette that's affordable. This is the It's My Pleasure palette. And you just get an interesting array of purple colors that you don't get in a lot of other purple palettes. So I do highly recommend it. There's more palettes that I've reached for more, more palettes that I've been surprised by, so I suppose that's why it's ranking on the lower end of my ColourPop products, but I still really enjoy it, and if you're into purple, I still do recommend it. Coming in at number 18, we have the Uh Huh Honey palette. Now, I haven't used this one very much, so that's why it's ranking lower, but on the terms of originality, I do not have another yellow palette in my collection, and I think I think the colors are really great. The quality is really great. I love how they put this brownish mustard shade in here because it does add the depth, but it blends in perfectly with the other yellow shades. So I don't wear yellow too much, so I haven't reached for this too much, but as far as the color combos they put, the color layout, everything, quality, it's really, really nice. Number 17, we have the At Forest Sight with Raw Beauty Christie. I have a love-hate relationship with this palette. I'm not the biggest fan of the color story, just these grungy tones aren't tones that I tend to grab for very often, and I did have some problems getting them to blend, but then we get to the top two rows, and I really did enjoy Enjoy this palette a lot. So it depends on the look that I'm doing, how much I love this palette. Overall, I do think Christy stayed true to herself. She created a beautiful palette for herself. But for me, as far as what I want to grab for, I wish this had more shimmers and I just don't care for the grungy tones. So that's when kind of my personal preference comes into play. Number 16, we have Baby Got Peach. It is just such an adorable palette. I mean, I really like the variation in color here if you're staying in the peachy kind of color theme. I like that you have this lighter shade. I like how you have an apricot, but also like a deep, almost rosy apricot and a bright orange as well. I just feel like you can get a lot of different looks with this palette. It really is a great one if you're into this color story. And their nine pans are just so good. Number 15, we have the Smoke Show palette. This is actually renamed to Blow and Smoke. Don't know what that is all about. But this is the palette that I am wearing now. I don't grab for it very, very often, but it really is such a statement in my collection. If I want a really deep, smoky eye, super cool toned gray, black, whatever, I know I have this palette and the quality is quite good because these shades can go very, very wrong quality wise, but ColourPop truly did a really good job with this palette. So if you're into these tones or you want to incorporate these tones into your collection, this is a great one to go for. And again, I created this look with it. It is such good quality. It's quite shocking. <laughs> Number 14, we have Blush Crush. I love this one because it's just soft, feminine, pretty colors. It's just something really easy to grab for. 2020, I fell in love with more pinky toned eyeshadows. And so I bought this in 2020. It's a really great palette. It really fit my needs. Maybe I didn't buy this in 2020. I can't quite remember, but it was either right at the end of 2019. I don't know. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Really beautiful, really fit my needs for 2020. Didn't grab for it a lot, but I still love it. Number 13, we have Just My Luck. 
This is ranking so high based on just plain originality. I don't have a palette that has this array of colors. The quality is decent considering that these colors can be harder to make. I like how we have a little bit more brown leaning shades, a little bit more yellow, pastel. Again, whoever laid these colors out, I just feel like the process was really thought out and it's a great palette. Unfortunately, it's no longer sold, but it was a really good one. Number 12, this is personal preference because I love these tones. This is Lilac You A Lot. Now, It's My Pleasure was that deeper purple one. I prefer this one simply because I like the tones better in this one. It's light purple. It's very, very girly. Uh, just, it's a good one. Again, I don't think it's ColourPop's best, best, best quality, but I just love the color story so much. I like it better than your Acuity too. And it's so cute and tiny. Number 11, oh my gosh. Now we're getting into like top tier ColourPop palettes. The Zodiac palette, this was in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. It is no longer available, but what a thought out color story. I just feel like she covers so many bases with this color story. The quality is really, really good with this one. You have some bright colors, you have some purple tones, you have some warm tones, you have some neutral tones. Overall, I find this to be such a well-rounded palette. I don't grab for it quite as much anymore because you guys can't get a hold of it, but let me tell you, back in the day, this was an amazing amazing palette. Number 10 has to probably be one of my most used color pop palettes. This is California Love. This has traveled with me many times and I didn't think I would love it so much because I'm not as into warm tones and this palette has ended up pulling very very warm but I don't, I don't know if it's the packaging or what but I just grab for it. It has every tone and shade and depth that I would need for traveling. It has glitter, texture, all of it. It's just really really nice and even though I say I'm a cool tone lover I still like me some worn tones and this is just such a wearable palette and you'll see from now on for the most part all of these palettes are a little bit more on the wearable side so I use them more that's why they're ranking so high they're just wearable you know so I'm moving in at number nine again another Kathleen Lights collaboration. This is the Dream Street palette. Again, unfortunately no longer available, but again, such a well thought out palette. I feel like this one has a little bit more of unique colors. Like you have this shade right here and this shade and this shade. So that's why I like it better than the Zodiac palette. But again, neutral tones, warm tones, variations in colors, and it's just a wonderfully thought out palette. So I really have enjoyed that one. Number eight, this is just a completely wearable palette, great for portability. Haven't used it as much as I would like to, but I just love the colors and the quality so much on this that it has to rank really high. This one is less pink than Blush Crush, which was the counterpart to this. So I like this one because it leans a little bit more neutral. The colors look absolutely stunning and I just really love it. Number seven, we have the Bare Necessities palette. I mean, obviously, it is just the perfect everyday palette for you if you aren't traveling because it is quite large, but if you like the ColourPop formula, you're looking for something very wearable and you just, I mean, you have mauves, you have taupes, you have warmer color. It's just a great range here. Some of the colors do look similar to one another, but the value in here just cannot be beat. It can't. Number six, Sweet Talk palette. This was my number one for the longest time because I love the colors in here. Pinky peachy shades, lots of dimension in here. You got a couple glitters, which I'm not so into glitters anymore, but back in the day, I loved me some glitters. This is definitely one of my most used palettes from ColourPop. Everything about the story is just perfect for spring and summer, and I always find myself reaching for it that time of year. Number five, I'm so happy to announce that this is back in stock. I thought they had gotten rid of it for good, but this is the So Jaded palette. This is another Kathleen Lights collaboration. And again, you just get so many options. I always grab for this for holidays. I play in this corner for Christmas, and then you have some fun summer colors in here. With Kathleen's palettes, she really doesn't stick to one color story. She adds many, but they all still work so cohesively together. So this one is just a fun, jewel-toned palette, and I do highly recommend that you, if you are interested in it, to pick it up because you get a lot of different formulas in here, and it's a great formula to begin with and I'm excited to see this back in stock so that I can continue playing with it because the color, the options, it's just endless, you know? Number four is the Mulan palette. Part of why it ranks
rank so high might be because it's Mulan and I was Mulan for many years. <laughs> Halloween go growing up, but look at these. I feel like ColourPop hasn't launched another palette like this as far as quality, as far as textures. Again, I talk, I'm big on variety. I would like to see variety in a palette as far as textures and depth goes, and I feel like I really get that. It's a cohesive color story, but you have a lot of options, and I have grabbed for this palette a ton from ColourPop. It seems to be so high quality. Number three, we have the Double Entendre. This, hands down, is my most used palette from ColourPop. It might not look like it, but I swear it is. It's a little bit warmer but compared to California Love, it's more neutral, which I think is why I grabbed for this one more. A great travel palette. Once again, it has everything that I personally feel like I need. So I, I look at the color story and I'm not super in love with it, but it's just so versatile and great for every day that it's ended up being my most used palette. I don't believe they sell this anymore, which is unfortunate, but it's really great. Number two, Going Coconuts. This one is a very popular one by ColourPop and for good reason. So my shade might be a little bit mismatched just because I dropped this one time and then I just kind of randomly put them back in their spots but the quality and the color story of this is great you get more of a warmer look you can get more of a cooler look I would say this leans right in the middle at more neutral but again everything you need in a simple nine pan palette I love this one and then finally my number one favorite mm, I don't think this will permanently be my number one favorite because it is just really on trend for what I personally personally like right now. I think it's a phase that I'm in, but the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox, I really love the quality on this one. And right now I'm just so into cool tone neutrals that this fits the bill of what I like right now. So I do think easily as kind of my preferences changes that this can like drop down, but right now, January or February 2021, this is my number one favorite. It is beautiful. I believe they recently restocked it. It is such a fabulous value. The quality you're getting is really great, and I just, I love the options of colors here, so it's currently my number one. All right, you guys, there you have it. Those are all of my color pop palettes ranked from number 24 all the way to number one. Make sure you go check out Leah Janae's video and subscribe to her channel. I will link that down below for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in to another rankings videos. Let me know what else you want to see from me. And yeah, I if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.